you take a look in your bulletins, you'll see some announcements for today. One of them being that we wanted to thank all of you who served as hosts here at St. John's for the new feast this year. We had a good turnout and had the opportunity to speak to several others about St. John's. So thank you so much for that. Also, Marjorie Kendrick has requested that we keep her in our thoughts and in our prayers as well as she navigates a challenging time in her life. Now I turn it over to Kathy for another quick announcement. So Mrs. Melody, uh, as went out in our in, in this monthly messenger that is out today, and as well as the newsletter and in your bulletin, there is the announcement that the council is now offering a call agreement to our lovely Crystal here. Um, so we actually have the full copies of that draft agreement now. They are in our break room there. <laughs> we call that room now. Um, so if you want a copy to read the full agreement, they are there for you to take. If you guys want an electronic copy, let us know. We can send it to you. Uh, anybody watching online, if you would like a copy, uh, you can uh, contact the office and we can send that to you if you need to review it, if you're not able to be here. But we will be having the congregational meeting in two weeks from today, right after service, to vote on whether or not to approve our call agreement with Christelle. So I urge everybody to please take a look at it and give us any questions or feedback that you have. Thank you.
living Christ. You fiercely protect and embrace the young among us, reminding us of the sacred value in every person. If we are young, may we feel deeply in your delight in us just as we are, knowing that we are cherished and safe in your care. If we are no longer young, may we live in a way that honors our truest childhood self, free from stumbling blocks that keep us from fully following you. May we seek to cultivate hearts as open and trusting as those of children. And may we nurture the creative power and passion that adolescents bring. Guide us to remove any barriers that might cause harm or lead others astray. Help us to be aware of all the salt within us, the essence that preserves our faith. And may we be at peace one another. Amen.
We are quick to judge and slow to listen. We are tempted to pursue our own ambitions and forget the needs of our neighbors. We fail to recognize your image in those who are different from us and struggle to be a source of welcome and love. Forgive us, O oh God, for the ways we have been complicit in systems that harm and for the ways we have failed to follow the example of your radical hospitality. Turn our hearts towards humility, our spirit towards compassion, and our lives towards justice. Guide us in your way that we may walk faithfully Hear the good news. God's love is wider than our understanding, deeper than our fears, and more expansive than our doubts. When we confess our shortcomings and seek a new way, God is faithful to forgive, to renew, and to set us back on the path of love. Know that you are forgiven. Know that you are loved and be at peace. And let us commit ourselves once more to live in the light of God's grace. Amen. The time has come for us to turn towards one another and extend the peace of Christ to each other. May the peace of Christ be with you. James, are any among you suffering? 
They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back from another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will over and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This 
when we're asked to consider a question that at that time in elementary school I didn't fully grasp. And now I ask you, church, to think about it. What role does community play in your healing? In our individualistic world, we often think of healing as something personal, something we have to navigate on our own. We may think that it's a sign of strength to carry our burdens silently without involving others. But James encourages us to see things differently. He urges us to bring our burdens into the light, to share them with others, and to invite prayer and support into our struggles. But to do that brings up a difficult question. Why? Why should we allow others to witness our pain, knowing how vulnerable that makes us feel? I think many of us instinctively lean toward privacy when it comes to our struggles. After all, it seems easier, safer, to keep things private. Our world prizes self-sufficiency and tells us to solve our own problems, to stay strong and to maintain control. But what James is offering here is a different kind of strength. He's invited us to see vulnerability as a path to heal. I know in my previous sermons, I've mentioned the discomfort of being vulnerable before. The discomfort being the act of willingly stepping into the unknown. To expose our hearts to others and to trust that they will not leave us or judge us, or look away. That is so much risk. And with so much risk, it makes sense to avoid being vulnerable as much as possible. So why does James encourage us to share personal parts of our lives with others? Why should we risk vulnerability when there's no guarantee that sharing will even solve our problems. James writes, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint with them the oil in the name of the Lord. I think James understood something fundamental about who we are as human beings. We are not meant to walk through life alone. We are designed for connection. And healing, whether it is physical, emotional, or spiritual, often requires more than just individual effort. It requires the presence of others. But let me clarify something important. James is not suggesting that we share every intimate detail of our lives with just anyone. Vulnerability doesn't mean a complete lack of boundaries. Rather, he is talking about discernment, daring ourselves to trust in the people within our community with whom we can be honest, those who can hold our stories with care. And when we extend that trust, we give others the opportunity to be there for us, to show us that they too are safe spaces in which our pain can dwell. I have come to realize with this understanding how impactful it really is when someone asks me, can I pray for you? For what they are offering is to carry your burden alongside you, to lift up your struggle to God in a way that connects us both to the divine and to each other. So now, I'd like to invite us into a small practice of 
that vulnerability right here together. Are you willing to try it with me? Let's take a moment first to slow down and reflect where we are in our lives. You can close your eyes, take a second to check in with yourself. As you're checking in, I want to ask you, where is your pain today? Maybe it's physical, emotional, or spiritual. Now I want you to take a deep breath and narrow that pain down to just one word. Maybe that word is grief, or anxiety, or fear. So now I invite you to keep your eyes closed, and if you feel led, I encourage you to speak that one word aloud. Trusting that your voice will be heard by this community, not in judgment, but in love. And if your heart is quiet today, think of someone you know who might be struggling. And let your word reflect their pain. Feel free to say it out loud whenever you are ready. Let us take these words and lift them up to God in silent prayer. Because even when we don't know the details, it's all right. Because God knows. So let's lift them up. each other's story, saying to one another, I am with you in this moment. Your pain matters, and I am present with you. We invite God into our lives and our circumstances when we pray, trusting that she will work in ways we may not always see, but can certainly believe in. So now, as I close, I bravely ask you, church, can I pray for you? Gracious and loving God, we come before you as a community, united in the honesty of our struggles and the vulnerability of our hearts. We lift up to you the emotions and pains that were spoken aloud and in the quiet within this space. The grief, the anxiety, 
anxiety, the uncertainty, the anger, the sadness, and all the unspoken burdens in between that weigh on us. We trust, loving God, that you hear every voice, see every heart, and that your presence is with us even now. God, help us to remember that we do not walk this journey. Gracious God, we come to you with open hearts and minds, bringing all that we are. Our doubts and fears, our joys and sorrows, our concerns and our prayers. You invite us to hold the world and all its creatures in prayer. And we accept that invitation. wondrous earth and all who dwell in it. We bring before you the nations of the world where so many face division, conflict, famine, illness, drought, and floods. We lift up all who are suffering, those who make difficult decisions in leadership, and especially the innocent who are caught in the crossfire of this conflict. May your love, justice, and peace guide all who strive for a better world. God of justice and mercy, we give thanks for those who serve in public life, those in government, those who serve in the armed forces, and those who work in our communities to protect and uplift others. May they be guided by wisdom, compassion, and a commitment to serve the coming good. We hold before you all who are called to these roles, that they may lead with integrity and courage. 
God of liberation and justice, we acknowledge the pain of division and inequity in our own society, racism, sexism, ableism, homophobia, transphobia, privilege, mental health stigma, and other injustices that harm and divide us. We confess the ways in which hatred, fear, and bitterness can take root in our hearts and in our world. Transform these energies into a commitment to peace, justice, and unity. May we be instruments of your love and bearers of your light, creating spaces where all can belong and thrive. God of community and compassion, we lift up our local communities, our church, and ourselves. We pray for those struggling with crime, poverty, and injustice in our neighborhoods. Empower our faith leaders, Holy Mother, local government representatives, and community organizers to listen deeply, act justly, and work together for the flourishing of all. Guide us in seeking solutions that promote peace, equity, and wholeness. The God of healing and wholeness, we bring before you all who are suffering. Those facing financial stress, unemployment, grief, illness, or loneliness. Those who have suffered from the devastation of Hurricane Helene in Florida, who are left without their home, without the blanket of comfort or safety and security. We ask for your strength to surround them. Teach us to be your hand and feet in the world, showing compassion to all we encounter. And we especially remember those who have asked for the prayers of this community. God of grace and gratitude, we offer ourselves to you, our hopes, fears, our challenges, and our joys. And in a moment of quiet, we again lift up the silent prayers that rest in our hearts, trusting that you hear and hold them all. Holy One, thank you for the gift of your love, your presence, and your unending grace as we pray the words you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. systems that hold us back, but God's love is steady, always calling us to something greater. Today, we are invited to be part of a better story, one where we break chains of injustice, spread kindness, and lift one another up. With grateful hearts, let us give what we can, not just for this community, but to plant seeds of love and change in the world. If you can give today, Bring your offerings forward during communion or use the QR code in our bulletin for electronic giving. If you are unable to give at this time, know that you are a valued part of this community. Share your needs with us and we will strive to support you. Together, let us be God's people, creating a just and loving world.
rather of Jesus saying, I am for you, and accept the invitation to be his friend that he cherishes and longs. Through the broken bread. Through the cup of blessing. Come, for all is ready. We have received these gifts of bread and wine. You have fed us with spiritual food. Thank you for assuring us of your goodness and love and reminding us that we are all members of his body. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of Jesus and bring us with all your people into the joy of your beloved kingdom. Amen. Please stand as you are able.
When we do, we reflect the very heart of God. A God who meets us not just in our private prayers, but in the shared spaces of love, vulnerability, 